Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesigningtechtips.com. Well, we've got a fun little hover effect for you today. Got three images at the top here that's got a little title up there. When I hover over, they're going to darken down, but a text is going to appear underneath. Really easy to do. In this video today, we're going to show you how to set this up. We're going to use the little custom CSS panel to write a little bit of code. And we're going to get this effect. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. And let's go down to where we want to work. I'll add a new little row under this one. I'm going to throw three columns in it just purely because that's what I've got on top. And you can use this on pretty much any module you want. I'm going to go ahead and use a call to action module. As you can see, it pops it in there. We've got a title. We've got a bit of text in there. Okay, the first thing that I want to do is put an image in there, whatever image we want to sh have show up first, as in the top ones there. Always find background under content. We're going to go into the background, third tab along. We're going to add a background image. Pop in whatever background image you want. Fantastic. I'll just roll this back up here. I mean, that's okay, but of course, we have a hard time reading the image and we have a hard time sort of seeing her face through there. So initially, I just want to see our title. I don't want to see the content. But that title too is just getting a little bit lost in there. So I'm going to bring it out by having a little gradient over the top here that's dark at the top and transparent at the bottom. So while we're still in background, I'm going to go next door to background gradient. I'm going to hit the little plus to add a background gradient. By default, it puts in a gradient with blue at the top and a green at the bottom. Of course, we can't see this because we've got that image there. I want this gradient to be mixed with our image. So I'm going to click on the image tab again. We roll down here, background image blend. I'm going to set this one to multiply. And there you can see the gradient color over the image there. And they've got some really great blending options here. You can get some great effects if you go through these. I'm going to use multiply for mine today there. Once you've done that, we can go back to our gradient and customize it how we want it. Well, I'm going to make this top one, the blue, I'm going to make that a black by just clicking on it, clicking on the color I want. As you can see, that's turned that black up there. And this bottom one, I want it to be totally transparent. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to change it to transparent. Now what I'm going to do is I only really want this black part to highlight our title at the top. So I'm going to drag the transparent one left. As I do this, you can see the transparent part getting bigger and the dark part getting smaller. I want to drag it up to about there so my title's the movie about there nicely readable but we can still see that image nicely through it that's shaping up but of course i don't want to see any text down here until they actually hover over it so we'll do that with a bit of coding in a minute but also when they hover over it i want that background to change i want it to become dark so that when the writing comes in they can read everything to do that still on the gradient here I'm going to hover over where it says background at the top here. Little arrow there. Click on it. It'll bring up two tabs. Desktops when the mouse is not on it, which is what I want to happen right here. And hover is when the mouse is on it. So for this part, I can do it without any coding. I'm going to click on the hover state tab right there. I'm going to drag this all the way back down. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to make it black. We've got a black background. I'll take a little bit of that opacity down here. Just so we've got a hint of that picture behind there, perhaps. So we've got that background when we hover over it. And this background when we take the mouse off. Perfect. Now, if you're going to have more than one of these and different amounts of text in it, you might want to give it a fixed height. That way they'll all appear the same height, even if they've got different amounts of text in. To do that, again, we can do this without the coding. If we go to our design and sizing down here, we've got height. Uh, that's probably about 325, 350. 
So I'm going to go into my height here. I'm going to put in 350. That makes it 350 picks. If that's too tall, you can take it down. I think that's where I used a berth. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, put it to whatever works for you. And then if you're going to use it on tablet and mobile, of course, these hover effects work best on desktop, but they will work on mobile. People just have to tap on them. If you want to check it on tablet and mobile and make sure it's going to be the right height, hover over the height there. Again, the little icons will show up. Got a little phone type icon. We can flip its tablet mode. Yeah, that's going to work all right. I might want to adjust that gradient a little bit and have it come down a bit more, but I think that's going to work okay, height-wise. And on the phone, let's roll back up. There it is on the phone. I think that height's going to work as well on the phone. Wait, so let's pop it back to desktop. Now we can do our little coding part. And it's really easy. And as usual, I'll put the code down below if anybody doesn't want to write it. But I would suggest that you write it yourself. It's a great thing to learn. Let's go over to our advanced tab now. To the custom CSS. We're using the freeform CSS tab here. Okay, this text, I don't want to be there at all. And we can target this text. It's paragraph text. So if I just write selector, that will select this module. I put a gap now and put a P for paragraph text. We can select that paragraph text. Open, close some curly brackets. First thing I want to do really is drop it down a little bit and have a bit more of a gap between the title and the text there. So I'm going to give it a bit of padding on the top. Padding dash top. I'm going to use, use 30 pixels for mine. Obviously adjust yours to taste. That's okay, great. And of course I don't want to see it. So I'm going to say opacity, O-P-A-C-I-T-Y, which is kind of see through this or the amount that you can see of an object. I'm going to put that to zero. And as you can see, it's disappeared. Well, as you can't see, it disappeared. Great. So we're just left with our title and the image. And that's pretty sharp looking right there. But of course, we're going to want to bring it back on hover. So let's select this whole thing from the S of selector to that opening curtain closing curly bracket there control c i'm going to drop down i'm going to paste it in there control v i'm going to make this a hover state by putting a colon right after the p with no gap i'm going to write the word hover we just create a, a hover state now so when they put their mouse on it we can have something else happen don't need that padding because that's not going to change anything that's not changing we don't need but the opacity i want to bring that back to one which is fully visible and you can increment 0.1 0.2 etc to get different variants of it so when we hover back on there that text is appearing but it's appearing almost instantly i want to slow it down for a little bit of grace so i'm going to use a transition duration to make that happen and don't forget our background is going to darken down with that gradient too so we always put the transition duration in the actual regular state not the hover state so in the regular state i'm going to say transition dash duration colon and we'll give it a tile i'm going to say 0.8 of a second 0.8 s and that should pretty much do it let's just check this out on the front end i'm going to save my changes here i'm going to save the page changes and let's exit the visual builder Roll on down. There's our little image with that lady there. When I hover over, it's going to darken down. That text is going to appear. That's pretty nice. Now, there's one thing here you want to bear in mind. With this method, if I just go over the corner there, that text is not actually going to appear. But anywhere in the middle there, it's going to appear. If you have a problem with that, what we can do is put padding all around our text here and add a little bit to the bottom. That way it'll trigger anywhere that they put their mouse. But I haven't got a problem with this. And of course, to duplicate, it's really easy. I'll show you how to do the little padding thing while we're in here. So let's re-enable the Visual Builder. Let's go down to our little module here. 
I'm going to take any padding away left and right so it stretches to both sides here in design, spacing. Left and right, just going to put a zero in there. Now you see that that stretches to all sides here. And we can uh, adjust our code if you want to by going to the custom CSS again, where it says padding top. Let's just take the dash top away and it'll have 30 pixels all around. Now, if you want to, you can add a little bit more to the bottom there, but it's going to trigger it at both sides there. Let's have a look. We could probably add another 30 pixels or so to the bottom. The easiest way is just to do padding. Bottom. I'll make that 60 pixels. That's almost there. I could add perhaps another 10 if you want to get it even closer. Let's make it 70 then. I don't want to make that module any bigger. Or I don't want it to overflow from the module. There we are. We've just got a couple of pixels at the bottom there if you want to make that bigger you can do by putting a little bit more padding on there but that should work fine of course once you've got one of these you don't have to go through it all again you can just clone it two little squares there drag one of them over doesn't matter which one because they're both identical go in there obviously you want to change your title you can put different amounts of text in there if you want to it'll stay the same height because we've given it a fixed height but of course, we're going to want to change out that image. Third tabs, the image. Just pop in whatever other image you want to put in there. Throw this fella in. And you've got another one. Rinse and repeat as many times as you like. Now let's just check this on the front end. I'm going to save the page changes. And let's exit the Visual Builder. Roll on down, there's R2. Now, as soon as I touch it, that writing's going to come in there. Fantastic. And similar for this one over here. Like I say, that's a really nice little effect. Really easy to do. And don't forget, you'll find that code down below the video for anybody who wants to use it. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video like this one. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.